Did I ever tell you how lucky you are? By Dr. Seuss. When I was quite young and quite small for my size, I met an old man in the desert of dries, and he sang me a song I will never forget, at least, well, I haven't forgotten it yet. He sat in a terribly prickly place, but he sang over the sunny sweet smile on his face. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, and you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, Ducky, you're really quite lucky. Some people are much more, oh, ever so much more, oh, much, much, much more unlucky than you. Be glad you don't work on Bungle Bung Bridge, that they're building across Boomer Bay and Bum Ridge. It's a troublesome world, all the people who are in it, you're troubled with troubles almost every minute. You ought to be thankful a whole leaping lot for places and people you're lucky you're not. Just suppose, for example, you lived in Guys 8 and got caught in traffic on Zayat Highway 8. Or suppose, just for an instance, you lived in Gazer with your bedroom up here and your bathroom up there. Suppose, just suppose, you are poor Herbie Hart who has taken his thrum down by a ladder apart. He never will get it together, I'm sure. He never will know if the gig or the gur fits into the scruts or the snugs or the stern. Yes, Ducky, you're lucky. You're not Herbie Har, who has taken his thrum dum ba ladder apart. Think they work you too hard? Think of Ali Sard. He has to mow grass in his uncle's backyard, and it's quick growing grass, and it grows as he mows it. The faster he mows it, the faster he grows it. And all that his stingy old uncle will pay for is shoving that mower around in the hay. It is piffless pay of two doklas a day, and Ali can't live on such piffless pay, so he has to paint flagpoles on Sundays in grooves. How lucky you are, you don't live in his shoes. And poor Mr. Bix, every morning at six. Poor Mr. Bix has his boyfriend to fix. It doesn't seem fair, it just doesn't seem right, but his boyfriend just seems to go slump every night. It slumps in a heap, sourdy in repair, Bix figures it's due to the local night air. It takes him all day to unslump it, and then the night air comes back, and it slumps once again. So don't you feel blue, don't get down in the dumps. You're lucky you don't have a boyfriend that slumps. And while we are at it, consider the schlots. The crumple horn, wed-footed, green-bearded schlots, whose tail is entangled with unsolvable knots. If he isn't muchly more worse off than you, I'll eat my umbrella. That's just what I'll do. And you're lucky indeed you don't ride on a camel. If you ride on a camel, you sit on a whammel. And when you know it's sort of a saddle held on by a button that's known as a faddle. And boy, if your old whammel faddle gets loose, I'm telling you, Tucky, you're gone like a goose. Mm -hmm. And poor Mr. Potter, T cross her I daughter. He has to cross T's and he has to dot I's. And I and T factory out in Ven Nine. Oh, the jobs people work at out west near Hotch Hotch. There's a Hotch Hotcher bee washer. His job is to watch is to keep both his eyes on the lazy town bee. And a bee that is washed will work harder. You see, well we watch and we he watch, but in spite of his watch, that bee didn't work any harder. No much. So then somebody said. Our old bee watching man just isn't bee watching as hard as he can. He ought to be watched by another hotch hotcher. The thing that we need is a bee watcher watcher. The bee watcher watcher watched the bee watcher. He didn't watch well, so another hotch hotcher had to come in as a watch watcher watcher. And today all the hotchers who live in hotch hotch are watching on watch. Watcher, watching, watch. Watch, watching the watcher, just watching the bee. You're not a hot watcher, you're lucky you see. And how fortunate you're not, Professor DeBreeze, who has spent the past 32 years, if you please, trying to teach Irish dogs how to read Javanese. And think of the poor puffing poogle horn players who have to parade down the poogle horn stairs every morning to wake up the Prince of Pooh Boken. It's awful how often their boogles get broken. 
and oh, just suppose you're a poor Harry Hotto. Try as he will, he can't make any shadow. He thinks that perhaps something's wrong with his giz, and I think that, by golly, there probably is. And the brother's bazoo, the poor brother's bazoo, suppose your hair grew like theirs happened to do. You think you're unlucky, I'm telling you, ducky. Some people are muchly, oh, ever so muchly, muchly more, more, more unlucky than you. And suppose that you lived in that forest in France where the average young person just hasn't a chance to escape from perilous pants-eating plants, but your pants are safe, you're a fortunate guy, and you ought to be shouting, how lucky am I? And speaking of plant, you should be greatly glad if you're not farming Flankenberg's 17th radish. And you're so lucky, you're not Gucky Gown, who lives by himself 19 miles out of town. In the ruins of Ronk, Ronk is rather run down. And you're so, so, so lucky, you're not a left sock, left behind by mistake, in the caverns of Croc. Thank goodness for all the things you are not. Thank goodness you're not something someone forgot. And left all alone in some punkerish place like a rusty tin coat hanger hanging in space. That's why I say, ducky, don't grumble, don't stew. Some critters are much, much, oh, ever so much, much, so muchly, much, much more unlucky than you.